making, spending some time with me. I know you have a lot of choices of where to be right now. I need to have lunch. Maybe some of you need to have lunch. You might have other things on your mind. What I want to promise you today is that I'm going to cover lots of questions. And whether you have a question or not, you will be inspired. So if you're sitting there and unsure, should I ask something? I don't know what to ask. I want to give you a lot of peace and rest into the idea that all of the questions that need to be asked today will be asked and you will get something out of this, regardless if you raise your hand or not. And that the Zoom gods are shining down on us and we have exactly the right amount of time and that you made the right decision by choosing to be here today. Because any other thoughts that show up are just gonna keep you from being present and being able to get what, to get what you need to get from today. So I just wanna encourage you to come here with an open mind. Um, so I wanted to share one thing before we get started and I get to your questions. Uh, actually two quick things. Let me just share my screen because I think it's easier to do it that way. I'm using Canva to do slides for the first time, y'all, and it's a whole new world for me and I just don't even know how to do it. So here we go. Uh, that was not what I wanted to do. So great, here we go. Here's what I wanna share with you, present. So um, in case you didn't see this already, we have a free event coming up on May 10th with Miata Adoga, and she's one of my favorite people in the world. And money is not easy to talk about. So even as I mention a free class about abundance and money, you may be like, ew, I don't wanna talk about money. Miata is a goddess and she has a very spiritual and mindful perspective for creatives. And this is free and we're bringing it to you next week. It's next Monday. Um, and Summer will pop the link into the chat so that if you'd like to register for this, this is another one where you have to register so we can send you a reminder, uh, but it is next Monday and I would love to see see you there. Thank you, Summer, for taking care of that. Um, okay, so I'm just checking in again, making sure who I see here. Um, so I see some faces of some uh, some corn dogs, as we call them in actor uh, Agent Goals, which is my program that's going on right now. I just wanted to make those of you who are here who are an Agent Goals person, I want to create a really clear container for today's call, which is um, we're going to have, I don't want to... Um, I want this call to be able to be uh, approachable for everyone who's here. So if you have calls about what we're doing, the work we're doing inside of Agent Goals, I'm going to recommend we save those for our call on Friday. So I want to make sure that we're able to show up here with questions about all the other good stuff that go on in an acting career or in a creative career, no matter what that is. Um, and so I want to make sure you can, anyone who's here who is not an actor, that you feel especially welcome because there is probably a larger proportion of actors here who will be raising their hands. But I want to just put my hand on your back and say that what I'm going to share with you today works for everybody. It's all, you'll find a way to apply it to yourself and I'll do a good job of narrating how to do that. So um, one thing that I have to share with you. So today I'm, we're recording this call. It is for a podcast episode, maybe two podcast episodes. So if you do not want to be recorded, just turn off your camera um, and then you're not going to be recorded. Uh, but if you do raise your hand and speak, obviously you're going to be recorded. So I just want to make that very clear. And I made it look really formalized on this little slide right here because I felt like that was the right thing to do. Um, but I just, well, that's not the slide I want you guys, this whole new slide thing. It's a whole thing. So just so that this is very clear, cause I don't want anyone to be surprised. I am recording you today for a podcast episode. Um, and so I can't wait for that to come out. And if you don't want to be recorded, no, no real problem. Just don't turn on your camera. Um, and don't raise your hand. Cause obviously if you raise your hand, then we're going to be recording your question. So I just wanted to be really clear. I don't want any surprises. And I want you to feel safe to ask the questions that you want to ask today. Um, so with that said, uh, Summer, I think I covered everything I needed to talk about. Did I miss anything? I think you right. covered it all. all right. And you guys, Summer, can you just wave so people can see your shining face? Summer's going to be there in the Hi. chat bar. So if you have any questions about how things are working or what to do, she will be there to kind of chime in and to help you out. So she can, she can chat directly at you and all that kind of stuff. Um, and if you haven't done this before, if you haven't been to a Zoom room before because you were blessed by being on the planet Mars in 2020. Congratulations to you. But in case you have not, uh, sometimes <laughs> they make changes. But at the bottom, you should see a reactions little face. If you click on that, you'll also see the raise hand button. So I'm going to be using the raise hand button so that I can call on people in an order that goes along. And I really want to open this up with a question. I want to say any no question is off uh, limits today. I mean, within reason, I think. Um, but knowing that I am working with both actors and creatives, this can kind of go anywhere. So I'm just going to encourage you to use that raise hand button and we will get started. So if there's someone here who wants to be the brave soul who goes first, I'm going to just volunteer three rules. Oh, and just one other thing. Yes, Summer. Wait, let me finish my sentence. There's three rules exactly. I want to finish it, which is oh, sorry. no one gets to be right, no one gets to be wrong, and no one gets to be cool. 
So if you're sitting over there trying to be the cool one who's quiet, sorry, no one's cool today. We are all showing up with an open heart. Coolness gets in the way of vulnerability and gets in the way of a willingness to say help. So something brought you to this call today, which said, I believe that my life can look a little bit different. And so I'm here to hopefully help you come through on that. Okay, Summer, go for it. Mine's just more technical, but okay. I will hit you up in the chat if you do speak to just confirm your name and your Instagram handle so we can note you properly on the podcast. Perfect. So perfect. You know awesome. what also, I'm going to do one more thing. Summer, can you do me a favor? And can you put yeah. the little link to my Instagram in the chat so that I can follow mm -hmm. here today? That'd be great. So if you guys comment on the chat and in, in my Instagram post, I will follow you back because I want to be your friend. Okay. Um, so I see some hands are up. I'm going to go straight to Brenda. Um, right before we get started for these questions, do not get intimidated by someone else's question. No one is better question than the one you're sitting on right now. First of all, number two is I'd love for you to ask your question with a little bit of structure. So I'm just gonna offer that a couple ways to say that to you. It is that, Brian, my question is, and then fill in the blank. What often happens when people ask questions is we will say, Brian, my question is about, and if you use the word about, you should, you know you're on a bad path and here's why. When we get into the about, when we get into the story, it is pulling us into the past of what might be holding us back. And what we want to try to do is move the needle by moving forward. If I need more story, I will ask for it. I will just zero in a little bit and say, hey, can you give me a little bit more background on that? Does that make sense? Cool. Brenda, I'm coming over to you. Uh, just unmute. And what is your question today? Hi, Brian. My question is, should I focus on recording really good self-tapes or pay for a company to help me make a reel when I don't have uh, experience and I, I don't have any scenes or any uh, stuff from the film world. Got it. That's Great. Anyone else? Keep yourself unmuted because uh, anyone else ever think about this if you're an actor? And if you're not an actor, I want you to type it, zoom in. And this is like, should I have a business card or do I need a website and all that stuff? So Brenda, this is, I'm sorry to tell you, Brenda, the news around this is you kind of have to make this decision on your own, but I'm going to give you a few different directions to go and we'll see where you kind of land. Okay. There are managers and agents out there who will tell you, do not shoot a reel with one of those real companies. And what I wanna to say to those managers and agents is, I love you so much. However, if we wait for me to get footage, it's gonna be a long time. Because if I shoot something next week, I'm still not gonna get it for nine months or maybe even a year because they gotta put it together. And so I'm gonna be sitting here without footage and we're waiting for something that's never happening and then my career is kind of not moving forward. So Brenda, I would say I love some real companies that do a great job. The trick to a real company is when I'm looking at their footage, do I look, does it look like I'm watching a real company, like someone who shoots reels, or does it look like I'm watching TV? And so I would get, the, the thing with that is it's going to be an investment, right? You have to really find a place that does it well, and it's probably going to cost a, little, a pretty penny. It might cost a, little, a few more bucks, right? The alternative to this is I know plenty of actors who are just using self-tapes to get themselves in the door. So that being said, take a look at your bank account. Is it the time that I have to invest in my reel? Mm, it's not, cool. I can act, I got that, I can do that in spades. I got tons of that back here. I was, brought, I was brought to this universe to act. So I know how to do that piece. So let me do my self tapes that I'm gonna use to try to get some traction for myself. And in the meantime, I'll think about saving a little bit for a reel or maybe I'll shoot some stuff and then I will have that in tandem. But I do think that it is, a lazy actor who does not have a self tape that they can share at this point. Now, I'm not saying resistance doesn't come up. I'm not saying I don't have a self tape setup. I'm not saying those things don't show up, but I am saying we are becoming an evidence-based business. And I also think society, which means if you say that you can do X, Y, Z, then you need to show me that you can do X, Y, Z. Your resume isn't carrying enough for me anymore. I now need to be able to see you act. If you say you can do comedy, show me that comedy reel. If you show me you, you're destined to be on a one hour drama, show me that you're doing that. So that way I can buy into that idea. And part of the reason for that isn't because human beings are becoming less trusting. Part of the reason for that is because we have social media now we can see things. So we're used to being able to see, show me the evidence that this really does what it says it can do. And the thing is you, Brenda. So if you say you can do comedy, show me the comedy. Does this give you kind of a place to go? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so it's May 3rd. Is it May 3rd? It's May 4th. May the 4th, 4th. be with you, my loves. Okay, so it's May 4th. When are you going to shoot your first self-tape by? Let's make a commitment. Yeah. Um, it's 
it's May 4th. Um, two weeks. What's two weeks from May? 4th? Two weeks from today is the 18th of May. 18th of May. Great. Now we'll just say one more thing about this. And this is where I think this applies to anybody's creative business is this is where I would call upon some kind of professional to be part of the conversation, particularly because this is not Brenda just putting an audition on tape. She's trying to create a tape that she's going to use multiple times. So I would probably bring a coach into that conversation because you're going to be getting a lot of mileage out of this. So it might be worth the less expensive version of this where you have a coach there who's helping on the, helping you with the scene. And if a coach is really good, we just wait, pause for the cause. Well, if, the, if the coach is really good, Brenda, they're going to help you come up with scenes because they've been coaching people all the time, right? And Brenda, the good news about, I heard you say like, where do I get a coach? I will just say to you is the good news right now is everyone is online. So you can study with some of the best at LA, New York, San Francisco, Atlanta has to offer, Chicago, right? And so I would just encourage maybe some people who are in the chat to offer some great coaches to Brenda, because I think that'd be a great place to start. Cool. Awesome, Brenda. Thank, Thank you, you so much. For sure. Um, okay, I'm coming over to Richard and then to Dolly and then to Heather. Uh, Richard, what is your question? You should be able to unmute yourself, I think. Let's try, there should be a button there. Yes, can you hey. hear me? Yes, yeah, sure can. Okay, well, that was my question, bye. <laughs> <laughs> we were winning, we're winning over here, great. <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, what brought me to this uh, seminar was you mentioned uh, what, what to do when you're stuck and um, so I, I know you're going to get to this in the course of the next hour and a half, but um, I'm an actor of 30 some odd years, a working actor. And in the last two months, I've just found myself absolutely sort of out of ideas. Um, um, and I'm trying to, I want to find out from you, like some ways to sort of get my mojo back. And, and uh, yeah, so yeah. I, so that's, that's what I wanted to. I'm gonna guess you're the only actor or creative person on this call feeling that way, am I right? He's so weird, right? What's wrong with him? So Richard, first I want you to know you're in good company. We've been through quite a few 14 months here, haven't we people? Um, for ourselves and for the way we're showing up for other people. So I, I wanna speak into you know, ways and practicalities to get your mojo back, but I also wanna also, I wanna also not deny the season we've been a part of. We've been part of a season of being hunkered down and being separated from each other. And that first, particularly for a creative person, I think oftentimes, even if you're an introvert, get, you do get energized by the effect you have on other people because it's the impact you're having through your creativity. So I wanna just appeal to that part of it. And then Richard, I think the best way for me to help you specifically in this moment is if you were to have your mojo back, what would be happening? Give me an image of what that world looks like. What would be happening is that I'd be um, getting in um, for guest star roles again and preparing for them and shooting one, two, three auditions uh, a week the way I have been, had been doing up until a few months ago. I'd also have, what it would look like is that I would have more faith that things were going to change. Right now, uh, just there've been so many, it's just been so many things have, and again, this is quite deep into the pandemic. Things were fine, again, up until about a month ago when um, I, put a, I made a big push to get an agent um, by putting, cutting together a new dramatic reel and a new comedy reel with casting directors cut, which somebody just mentioned in the chat room, uh, that led to nothing. And then um, it just dawned on me that most of the auditions that I was getting were for much smaller, mm -hmm. much smaller roles. And, and uh, just so I get a few points of clarification, just some facts here. Do you have representation right now at all? Or are you- Oh working? yes, oh yes, I, I have, a, I have a, a manager and an, and an agent. Great, okay. And, so there's a little bit of fake it till you make it that I want to talk about here, you guys, right now. So what Richard's looking for two things. One, a how-to, and I want to feel a certain way. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Like you want to feel I'm engaged. And so what I'm actually thinking about, and Richard, let's see if this appeals to you. We're going to just brainstorm for a few minutes. So eat the fish, spit out the bones. We're just going to say yes to the dress for a few minutes with some ideas. So one of the things, are you, and I want this to be a yes or no answer. You only get two choices, yes or no. Are you an excellent Client? Client? Yeah. Yes. Great. 
And are you, uh, how often are you in touch with casting directors who have booked you or auditioned with you in the past? My manager is in touch with them. Uh, no, not the question. Oh, how often okay. are you in touch with them? Uh, infrequently. Okay. I'd like to, can we, that's the first place that I would go to. Mm -hmm. In this pandemic, if it's bought anything for any of us, no matter what business you're in, it has bought us the ability to be human beings inside of whatever career we're inside of. So what that means to me, Richard, is I am assuming, based on the, what you've told me so far about your 30 years in the business, you've booked work in the past, obviously. So going through your resume and saying, who is the casting director for each of these projects? Who is the director for each of these projects? And in some cases, it depends on the project, who is the writer in all of these projects? And then going one step further, and this is the step where a lot of actors bail, and this is the step that I think is integral to the whole thing. Who are the writers, directors, and casting directors I have auditioned for before, even if I didn't book? That collection of people, that is your audience at Coachella. That's it. Those are the only people you want there. Those are the only people you need to be appealing to right now. So it may be tempting to run to a work casting director workshop and spend some money and get to see somebody. I would, at the point that you are in your career, Richard, you've met enough people. It is about loving up on that audience and letting them know you exist, you're still in the business and what you're up to. This beautiful reel that you said you just put together, it should be in all of their hands. I've been keeping myself busy during the pandemic. I'm giving you a big shout out of love and hoping that you're doing really well and you're coming on the other, other side of this thing feeling really healthy and well. I wanted to share, here's two minutes of what I've been up to. I look forward to seeing you sometime soon. And I would send, I would actually, since this is one of the first times you're doing this, I would send all of these personally, as opposed to creating a database and doing a MailChimpy kind of thing. That could be in the future, but I would first do a round of personal reach outs before you did that. You will hear back from people, Richard. And then if it's somebody you're like, oh, I don't, if anybody's out there like, where do I get their email address? Anybody having those feelings? First of all, we all know what Google is, hopefully. Second piece is, People are using Instagram and Facebook and things a lot more because of the pandemic. Like we backed off and then we lean back in again. It can be okay to go to Instagram and say, hey, I wanted to reach out to you over email. I didn't have your address. So I thought I would share this with you here. If there's a better place for me to reach out to you, please let me know and to go ahead and send it on Instagram. But I would just do this in tiers. First tier is who have I ever worked for before? They hear for me. Who are the people I've ever auditioned for before? They hear for me. And then all the people whose email addresses I didn't have, now I'm gonna go look for them on Instagram wherever I can find them. And Richard, I wanna be real clear because I'm sure some people have, who's got resistance going on out here? Anybody feeling resistance? It's tough. Sure, I see that resistance, totally. I'm gonna double down on your resistance for a second. Your resistance is your board of directors and it's keeping you small and you're not getting work because of it. So I don't know about you, but I don't want my board of directors to look like resistance. I want it to look a lot different than that. So part of the resistance also, and I want to be really clear with you, Richard, this applies to anyone in any business, what we just talked about in terms of getting the people who've worked with you in the past, is you were not called to be made manifest on this planet in this moment to make a database and send emails. You were called to be an actor. So doing this kind of work is going to feel a little out of sorts for all of us. We have to acknowledge that this isn't where we were planted with our zone of genius. And once we kind of go, oh, right, like, I'm not so good at this, quote unquote, because this is not what I was specifically equipped to do. Therefore, can I please give myself a lot of slack and be really kind to myself and say, great, it's I, that guy, Brian, screamed at me for 90 minutes. I'm going to I'm going to listen to him and I'm going to send 10 emails today or three or one email today, because once I break the seal, I know this will be easier for me. And I would just say that in this case, as in all, perfection is the enemy of good. You're not going to reach everybody. You're going to reach as many as you can. The one request I would have for this, Richard, is as you're doing this, you're writing down the names and the email addresses so that next time we have a way to go to find them. Where I would see this becoming a cycle of mojo being energized, Richard, is you're going to get responses. And that's going to start to get you feeling like you're out into the world. The other th question that I want to ask, I'm still going, Richard. Is that okay? <laughs> right. The other question I would ask is, how often are you acting? And that is the number one. Your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit was put on this planet to act right now. So if you're not acting much, you're going to feel like you're not on alignment. It's like you're an Olympic, Olympian who's forgetting to swim. No wonder you haven't gotten the pool in a while. So get in the pool if you're not already. And that's going to acting class. 
I, I love actors who say we're going to get together and read a play. I've never heard of a group ever happening that was consistent enough to make it happen, which is why I believe in class, even though I know it can cost money, right? So I'm down for you to get to your friends and read a play. Totally. Do not count casting director workshops as class. Go to a class where someone is pushing you to do mo better, where you are engaging your imagination. Um, Richard, does this give you a few options to run toward? It does. Thank you, Brian. I'm so glad you asked that question. I think a lot of us needed that. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, next question, I'm going to come to Dolly, and then Heather, and then Sapna. Okay, uh, Dolly, I'm coming to you. Hello, hello. Can hello, you hello. Me? Hi. I can see you. Um, yes, hi. Okay, cool. I'm sneaking this in at my day job, so I'm like a little wonky right now. First of all, thank you so much. I just want to say the way you language the business of acting and the heart and soul of all this stuff has so totally turned around my mindset. So thank you a thousand times for that. Bye. Um, I'm going to log off, you guys. We had a great day. Thank you so much. Okay. Great. <laughs> Done. Um, my question is about SAG because I came to acting later and I'm telling myself that I'm in the right place at the right time, but I'm non-union and it feels for me like the elephant in the room and the hurdle to uh, getting the auditions that I want, um, booking the jobs that I want. And I, I don't know. Do you, do you have advice around whether it's so necessary, especially in New York? I have, advice, I have advice for you. Feel, I have yeah. advice for you. Can you yeah. quit bringing that elephant in the room? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, it does not want to be there. It is a lie you're telling yourself. It is a lie that is taking up a lot or it's a big elephant. Yes. And I don't believe in captive elephants. Anyway, FYI. So I just want you to really not bring that into the room. So here's, I can give you a little bit, I'm sure you're gonna get support for this in the chat, but let me just kind of address this face on with you, is what I see happen for plenty of actors is if they chase their union card, they're not chasing acting. And it becomes a different conversation. Yeah. And it's a status conversation and it's not a art conversation. And you feel like crap every day. It's not a surprise to me that the way I'm talking is appealing to you right now because you're getting realigned with maybe a mindset that's the one your body wants in your heart wants. So I often believe, or no, I don't often believe, I believe SAG happens when it is supposed to. That if you pursue work, you'll get auditions and you'll suddenly have a SAG job and you're tapped heart lead and then you'll get another one. And then all of a sudden, oh, now you have to join. And I've seen it happen multiple times. What I see happen with actors who just chase their SAG card, like I said, is you're suddenly doing lots of extra work, which no offense, you can do lots of extra work, I'm just saying. Or you're looking at only specific jobs and you're keeping yourself out of other jobs. It's very rare. It's not, a, it's not unheard of, but it's rare that a project says SAG only actors can apply. And you may, and some managers or agents may say to you, I only take on SAG actors, cool for them. And what I say in that story is great. In their experience at their desk, they are only able to get in SAG actors. And then there's all these other managers and agents who don't give a shit. Okay, so we have to honor their experience as their human one person experience and not painting the entire business. Dolly, are you buying any of this of what I'm selling over here or no? Very much, yeah, okay. thank you. Absolutely, yeah. I really, so hit, hit, hit yourself to a different wagon right now. The wagon that I would want you to hit yourself to is, I deserve to work and I need to work. And so maybe you'll notice, oh, that's a SAG project. Cool, they're seeing non-SAG non actors. I'm gonna make sure I get in on that. Does that make sense as I say that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's 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 let this let Dumbo go back to the circus. <laughs> Deal. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, OK, I'm coming over to Heather and then to Sapna and then Rita. OK, Heather. Hi. Hi. Hi, hi Brian. Hello. Hello. Um, again, uh, Heather, Heather G here. So it's so funny. It's so funny that Richard mentioned agent manager because um, I, I've been grateful enough to have one um, since the pandemic or getting one in the midst of the pandemic. And now I'm auditioning and everything and everything is manifested is here. Boom. Amen. Um, my question is, um, I have done a lot of self submitting beforehand. And so now, you know, communication between my age and I are flawless. Um, but now they're veering me away from self-submitting. My question to you is, um, how would you recommend to keep those casting directors that I have developed some relationships with um, in the loop 
uh, without stepping on the toes of agents and things of, of my agents, pretty much, if that makes any sense. Sure. First things first, it is your career. It is, it is your career. You are the CEO. You are the boss. You get to decide yeah. what happens. In it. So I want to just empower you with that, but not from a self-righteous, crazy place, which sometimes I No, hear. no, no, absolutely I, not. Humble watch what you hear on Clubhouse is all I want to say. Sometimes there's a lot yeah. of like making everyone self-righteous, which isn't like how the business works always. Okay, great. It is your business. So you get to do what you want. And one of the things you want is to honor your relationship with your managers and agents. Mm-hmm. We're going to honor that. And you're going to, okay. and so what I'm hearing you say is you're not saying you're self submitting, you're saying like staying in touch. So I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing here. Can I get clear? Yes. So, no, yep, staying in touch from casting directors that I have self submitted to before getting past, representation. Right. So, so, yes. What do you imagine would be a way you'd like to stay in touch with them? What ideas have come to you already? I can tell you're a real person who's got ideas. So, I want to hear. Um, well, my three ideas one is just like what Richard said, I have an updated reel um, with content that I absolutely love. Um, my second is also from a humane point of view is like, Hey, I just wanted to, you know, I hope your day is going well from a non-actor, but just human to human. Um, and yeah, a lot of these casting directors are people of color. So I, that includes, you know, from more of a humane, um, point of view. And the third is saying, I'm so excited to share with you. I have representation now, wasn't able to submit for this SAG, you know, thing before I am now here, here they are. Great. Um, so those are my three ways. Yes. And you're doing all the, so in modus operandi is like an email or something, right? Yes, correct. Great. Okay. Um, all three are perfect. Let's do all three in one. Usually I'm not a multiples into one, but those are three shorties. Yeah. So and also like the, one of them okay. is like the ethos. The ethos of your email is I'm checking in on you as a human being. Here's a little bit of what I've been up to. Here's 90 seconds to make you laugh or enjoy mm-hmm. whatever, right? Um, it w- I would have to be a real persnickety Grinch of a manager or agent to get mad about you staying in touch, but not self-submitting. So I just want to be clear. They said to you, don't self-submit, which is not the same. That as is mar- correct. Not, not the same. That as is mar- correct. Right. Yeah. That is not, not no, the same thing. That is right. correct. So staying in touch is totally different. Okay. All right. So we're going to lean into that and okay. let's give you some bonus homework. First of all, you're going to do that, right? When are you going to send that email? Homework. You're going to send those emails. Bonus homework is. Oh, I have two of them already drafted. Right, so. right. Quick send. Right. <laughs> um, here's the thing I want to be careful of. And everyone listen to this, no matter what your business is. Make me feel like I'm a human being that you are emailing when you send me an email like this. Take time to wrestle with the language. I know y'all didn't sign up to be copywriters, but I find time and time again that that is what I'm doing with my actors is having you write in a way that is authentic and honest. Too often, I want you I want you to watch for the sneaky, I'm gonna puff myself up a little bit voice showing up in an email because it just rings of, I'm less interested in this person. I wanna feel there's some skin in the game when they send me the email. So just watch that piece of it. Your bonus homework is, Keep an eye out for things that you would normally self-submit on that you feel would be worthy of handing over to your manager or agent. Okay. Yeah. So you might say like, oh my gosh, this project is so cool. I know it only pays a hundred dollars a day, but it's just for three days. It's not going to take me off our radar for very long. I was thinking about submitting myself. Would you guys want to submit me? So just kind of massage that conversation. If something that fabulous comes up for you. Right. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. You're doing oh a great gosh, job. Thank you. Stay being here. Stay, stay being a good client. It's so important because when you're a good client, you can have an honest conversation. Yeah. You start to dick around and like do things behind their back and like I'm gonna submit myself and you get a little sneaky. Then you start to get weird and you kind of communicate a little bit less. And then yeah, yeah they're not any good. They're not submitting me. And I'm no bitch. You did all that shit. <laughs> You've been doing secret, <laughs> You've been having an affair with self-submitting, right? Yeah. And so, Really check ourselves with the energy we're bringing to that relationship, right? Mm, okay. Thanks. Oh, okay. Talk How about affirmations. You? Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on your reps in the middle of the pandemic. Congratulations. <laughs> um, okay. I'm coming over to, uh, let me just give you names here. Sapna and then Rita and then Migs. And Sapna, you're going to tell me if I said your name right, because you're going to tell me. Yes. It's, it's Sapna. It's like, what's up? Sapna. Oh, I like it. Great. What's your question today? Mine is kind of similar to Heather and Richard's. Um, Since the beginning of the pandemic, I've been repped and I booked a couple times through my reps um, during the pandemic. I booked a couple through self submissions and I was getting auditions mostly theatrically up until March 2nd was the last audition. And I just have gotten radio silence. Okay. Um, 
from my reps since then. And I did send a touch base email, just like with a picture or something that I was recently that I recently shot and just asked them how they were doing and, and asked them if there's anything I could do to improve audition. Sure. And, and just her just, you know, got a very cursory, like cute pick response, not a lot of engagement. And I'm just wondering, it's kind of weird, since I've had these reps, they've been very consistently sending me out and um, good relationship. And then all of a sudden, just silent and wondering if it's things are slow. And it's March, April, May is when things have kind of just gotten dead for me. And I don't know what to do. To okay, them. March is not that long ago, but I get what you're saying. I, I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and a uh, couple things. I want everyone to tune in. If you're multitasking, listen to this. I think that when we reach out to someone, we need to take care of ourselves. So let me just tap into this. What I would mean by that is if we're trying to like suss out the temperature of what's going on in a relationship, email is the wrong way to do it mm. because you're not going to hear tone of voice. You're not going to catch them on the spot. And my relationship with email is, can I please close my phone and put this down right now? I don't know what yours is, but like that's sometime my relationship depends on where I am. And if my boyfriend's like, get off your phone. Right. Mm -hmm. So depending on how I'm with my email, even if I love the person, I might give a cursory answer. Now, where I love your intuition is you notice a pattern shift. That's important. I think we always should notice a pattern shift because that's something's happening. Mm -hmm. Where I want to change your lang language, Sapna, is... I almost never want you to say to someone, what can I be doing? I like want to cut that language from like, that was like okay. 2004 way of relating to managers and agents. Let's bring us to 2021. And the way I want to relate to agents now is, hey, I've noticed things kind of have slowed down. What do we think is going on? Mm. Is this, do you guys, is this what you would expect? Is there like, this is becomes a conversation. Right. It doesn't become things have slowed down. So I need to do something probably. Right, right. They might say, actually, you know, we're glad you asked. We've been using this picture and you know what? Every time I click on it, I feel a little bit like it could be better. And I think this could be the answer. Now be careful. I think the headshots is like the number one, like, let me just put a bandaid on something. It's a new headshot, right? Yeah. I don't love that answer every time, but Sapna, I would want to have this be an inquiry moment. Hey, things have slowed down. I've noticed. What do you think's going on? Let's talk about it. Great. Right. And I would get it on the phone and not an email. Cause even if I love writing emails, I'm never going to be as expressive in an email as I would be on the phone with you. Okay. Does that makes sense. That's really helpful. And you can certainly steal from some of the stuff I've talked about already in terms of like reaching out to casting and making sure they know you and getting your, getting your acting business shop all cleaned up and good. But I think, you know, if you want to have an honest relationship, like the one we were talking about with Debbie earlier or Heather, Heather earlier, we just have to have that be a communication where you're not allowing yourself, where you are a vigilant policeman around stories that you may be writing about a re relationship. I don't like the word policeman. Let's cut that from it. You are just vigilant about mm -hmm. making sure that you notice when you're writing a story about a relationship based on action without having a conversation. Mm -hmm. You could even be something, I don't think this is you, but you could be someone who says, hey, when things get quiet, I write this really shitty story where I start to think I'm doing something wrong. So that's why I'm reaching out right now. So I just want to make sure that like everything's <laughs> looking good over there. So can you tell me is everything like, can we just take a look at what's happening? And like, oh, you know what? We don't think you're real, Zach. Like, and it becomes a conversation because the problem is, Sapna, you then write a story where it is my job to figure out why I'm not getting auditions. And I am not sitting there clicking submit every time or pitching me on the phone where they are feeling underserved by my materials, my credits, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And we right. don't want to stay in the dark when you have reps and managers and agents. This is your chance to get shine light on that, to let it no longer be opaque, but to have some transparency. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great. Uh, okay. Hey, I'm Brian. Yes, Mama. Can I have you say like how that would apply to me if I'm not an actor, like when I might want to pick up the phone or oh, email yes. might be not the best? Yes, 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 yes. I want to speak to that. And also I would love to call on a non-actor. It's earlier at some point. So if someone wants to like just tell Summer, hey, I'm a non-actor, then I can come to you now because I feel like we're covering a lot of actors, which I'm so happy about. I just want to make sure they're not feeling like we're not talking to them. So, um, I'm trying to figure out how to do this for the podcast for a second, y'all. So like Summer, do you want to like ask the question so that we can have a recording of you asking the question so that I can have that for the podcast? Yeah. Okay, great. So will you just do yeah. it? Yeah. So sometimes in my email inbox, I notice that 
these people I want to have business relationships with, I'm happy to hear back from them, but I'll get like these one or two word responses, which are fine, but I just can't really gauge the tone or like how invested they are in me. Um, what, and I don't want to be like badgering them with follow-ups. What would you suggest? Great. And I think this applies to all creatives that we've had those kind of conversations like that. And it, or I guess not even conversations, seeming conversations like that in our inbox where we haven't really gotten a response. Um, two things. One, you can call it out directly. The problem is the solution. Hey, Steve, I wanted to check in with you. I don't want to be badgering you, but I definitely want to see if there's a connection here where we might be able to help each other. Here's what, here's, this would let me know. If you could even let me know if we should hop on the phone or if it would be better if you think that like, it's the wrong time of year for me to be knocking on your door. Just let me know that too. That would be really helpful. So I love to give them an answer of like, make it easy for someone to say no. That's one place that I would wanna, I think it's really good for you to say to people, never apologize, never apologize. Like, no, I'm sorry to bother you. Nope, that, no. We're never sorry to bother, we're not bothering anyone, right? No, I don't mean to be a pest. I think the word badgering is a little bit in that neighborhood, but I think like it could work. You could make it, we could finesse it so it doesn't sound too rough. Um, you could also say something directly like, um, hey, you know what I found lately, Steve, is that when I hop on the phone with people, it gives them a much better sense of what I do and how I can help them. How open are you to hopping on the phone? Or could we set up a quick Zoom call? Because I think I, I heard what you were saying in our last conversation. I keep thinking about something you said in our last conversation where I could help you move the needle. And you could pull back into the specifics of your relationship and just dropping a little bit of what about that relationship or what about that conversation or connection you had in the past has got you thinking about them today. That's the real trick of it, right? Why are you emailing me right now? Oh, because I was thinking about what you said to me the last time we were on the phone and it occurred to me today. And this is what I wanted to bring. Hopefully that kind of gives an answer. And if it doesn't, whoever was kind of nudging somewhere on this, I want you to raise your hand. Cool, cool. Great. Uh, I'm coming over to Rita. Rita, what is your question? Hi, Brian. Hi. I hope you're doing well. Thank My you. question is, after a year in a pandemic, it's hard to visualize my normal life in the place I already live with the career I already had. How the heck am I supposed to visualize and plan for a new career path in potentially a new place when the new normal of the world is still so unknown? Your problem is your solution. And I love this question, first of all. Anybody else ever feel this way or trying to visualize what this new world's like? Everyone has been in the same pandemic you have. Everyone is unsure. Every article in the New York Times and on CBS this morning was, we're all going back to work and what are we going to wear to work again? And I haven't worn shoes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm always wearing my pajamas. Like everyone is thinking about this. And so Rita, I want you to, my desire around this is to re lean into the pioneer spirit. I am going to be curious about this. I'm not going to have the answer. Does that make sense when I say that? Like I'm going to go into the, I'm going to brave the wilderness to quote Brené Brown. I'm going to brave the wilderness and I'm going to know that, oh, I didn't like the way that I, are you, and you're thinking about a move. Is that right, Rita? Yeah. So I didn't like when I drove to that audition, like the way that I went and maybe I should look at the GPS a little differently this time, or I should actually look at the sides to pay two days early. So it's a little bit like buying into the idea of, I believe in trial and error right now. And my job is to make mistakes so that I can find the path that I like. Does that resonate at all? It doesn't. I'm sure that in the moment that can feel totally frustrating because I'm saying your job is to make mistakes. So I would bring both a beginner's mind to this I'm like, great, I'm not good at this yet. I'm figuring it out in total curiosity. When we are in judgment, the antidote to judgment is curiosity. Mm -hmm. So in judging against ourselves. I'm writing, I'm writing this right, down. Right, right. And then, that's why I wasn't right, looking up. Sorry, right. I didn't want to seem like I was just like, mm, let's text. Okay, and then Rita, in your leaving, I put in quotes of where you're mo moving from, there's probably some completion that needs to be done so that you can feel like you've left there. So where are you moving from and to? Do you mind sharing a little bit? That's the thing. I live in Philadelphia right now and I'm considering several other options of moves. And it's like, well, how, how to imagine all of those things individually mm -hmm. and see what avenue is 
Sure. That's so right. I will just a few things. First, here's the rule of thumb. It is never going to be a good time to move. <laughs> It doesn't happen. The pearly gates do not open. I guess that's not the opposite of what you're doing, but like there's never a day when like the golden person comes down and says, and this is when your move will be super easy and wonderful and all everything is going to line up perfectly. That just doesn't happen. So to believe into, it's never going to be easy to move. So I'm just going to have to move when I move. I'm not saying it has to be hard, but it's never going to be like done, right? So first things first, that belief. Second thing, try out some of these places. You're going to have to try it out. You're going to have to go find a friend who lives there, stay for longer than a weekend, you can and like experience a little bit of normal life. So you're going to want to make it a vacation and kind of don't make it a vacation. <laughs> where do they live? Where do they go to the grocery store? Where do they go around? Where do they go on the weekend to entertain themselves? Of course you can still do that. Right. So a little bit of that. And then I believe once you come home, if you, if you get to do those trips, great, that can be expensive. So I'm not, I'm not assuming that that's going to be the answer, right. Is take a day where you imagine that you live in LA. Great. I'm not pretending Philadelphia is LA, but meaning I'm in Philadelphia, but I live in LA. What does that feel like inside my body? What decisions might I make differently? Well, how do I think about coming home differently? So just a full day of imagining that that is your life. Does that make sense? Yes. And then I think a big part of choosing a move is like, what is my social network there? What are my support that I'm going to have when I get there? And like having, when I moved to LA from New York, I had like multiple conversations with my friend, Nicole, her ears are still attached to her head. Thank God. Right. And I had all my stories I made up about moving there. I had to have an agent before I moved, which was a lie. Like I had all these things that were holding me back. Right. And so just talking to her and getting real about it helped me a lot. Okay. Is that cool? You got a plan? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank be you. Patient, be patient with yourself. This will never, I want to give you this it's very unlikely that this will feel sure, that you will feel certain. So I would try not to force certainty before you take action. It may feel aligned. You may feel at a spiritual level, this feels right. It may not feel that same degree of certainty in that way, unless you really feel like that does it for you. For me, sometimes that will be enough for me. So just wanna lean into that idea, okay? Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Rita. We're excited wherever you land. Um, okay. Jimmy, I'm coming over to you. Hello. Hi. 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 Um, I have a question. Yeah. So the past month I have been putting together a demo reel to yes. reach out to reps. Okay. But now after hearing all of your advice, should I stop doing that and focus more on the self tapes or should I continue and complete the demo reel and then also do the self tapes? So question, uh, when you say you're putting it together, is it already taped? No, uh, I'm taping the next two weeks. So it's all written, uh, okay. all the pre-production stuff has been cast and then I'm taping it next week. So okay. I would let time be the answer to this question as opposed to okay. us deciding now. So you got a shoot set up, go do your shoot. Let the editing happen in a natural, non-rushed, sweating it kind of way. And if at the time you're ready to reach out to reps, you have it, you feel good about it and you feel like you love it and you want to use it, then you'll use it in combination with some self tapes. Okay. And if it doesn't, then I would like let the heat off of it. Because remember this reel, no matter where you land with what rep you land with needs to be a Maserati. I just want to be really clear, you guys, you can't have a crappy reel, have no reel before you have a crappy reel. Yeah. Because then there is evidence of bad acting somewhere in the world, which we don't want to have or bad work or whatever. Right. I'm okay with bad lighting and stuff. If, you, if it's not to a, to a limit, if your acting is fabulous in it, but what we don't want is to just be trying to put that out there because I, at least I have a real is not a, we don't have that. That's not a thought we're going to live with. We need our real to be a Maserati. So rather than putting the pressure of, I need a Maserati and I'm doing this larger process of reaching out to managers and agents at the same time, I'm going to see if this Maserati can be built in tandem with it. And if not, I'm going to live with myself. Does that sound good to you, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Congratulations on shooting next week. That sounds awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Have so much fun. Have so much fun and let yourself be free from having to ask this question. It's a, it's a learning experience in itself anyway. So even if it isn't something that I could ever use, it's a, it's an opportunity for me. 100%. So, yeah. You commissioned your own little short films. That's the way I like to think about it. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. Have a great time. Uh, okay, I'm coming to Valerie and then Amber and then Sierra. Okay, Valerie, what is your question? Oh, hey, 
sorry. I'm very excited oh, that Valeria. I joined. I said your name wrong. I'm so sorry I said your yeah, name wrong. Well, that's fine. Okay. I mean, yeah, thank you. Thank you for correcting yourself. Sure. Um, so I'm very excited that I joined Agent Goals. It's I'm like very excited. Yeah, the question is, so I'm wondering, I'm I'm in New York market, but I'm very excited about European market as well. Sure. Like there is the shows that are like my big goals yep. that I want to be on. And and like with Netflix, we see how many exciting things they make. And it's just like, it's so wonderful, right? And I was wondering how should I approach, because I still need to work on like, you know, relationship with New York casting directors, with LA casting directors, whatever, Atlanta and all that stuff. But I don't want to put it aside and wait for the right moment to start reach out to them. How should I approach? Because there is also casting directors and dire- there is a director who are like, I'm just dreaming to work with. And I know that I'm kind of vibing with my sense of humor and his stuff. I don't know if you know Armando Yanucci. I don't, but it's, I love his name. It sounds like an Italian like me, so we're good. But he's Scottish. Oh. <laughs> he's Scottish. Try it, try it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so here's what here's what I think. Two things. Get your home fires burning first. Get New York set up and great. Make New York freaking a shiny penny for you. Because everything you do inside of the making New York a shiny penny is going to actually be, so I want you to rely on your own strength here. You're going to be creating systems to stay in touch with people in New York. You're going to be creating materials that you use to stay in touch with people in New York. Once you have that, you're just going to replicate it with different email addresses or different ways of reaching out. But what you don't want to do, I'm going to do kind of all of these things and then nothing is really a shiny penny. And so I want to hold on to that. I don't want you to put that on hold either, but I want you to go out with guns blazing. Nope. We don't say guns blazing. I don't want you to go out and feel like really. I like it though. Okay. Okay. I'll let you use it. Great. So I want you to go out with guns blazing and feel like you're really putting out your best foot forward because remember, we're going to have to overcome maybe the worry that that person might have. Oh, well, she's not here in, in the UK or wherever. Right. So we want to overcome that by having such a beautiful package. I'm not saying perfection but just a beautiful package that presents you clearly with a clear narrative that they can say yes to you easily. Because remember, Mm -hmm. a doubting mind says no. Mm -hmm. Anything that inspires doubt is going to make them walk past or say no to this, right? So what we're going to do is get it so clean for New York and then use it to reach out. And then I would do probably very targeted reach outs to casting directors who are working on the shows that you really want to be a part of. And Mm -hmm. We want to get you managers and agents who believe that you can do this and that you should work in other countries. So we will make that very clear in any messaging that goes out to managers and agents that that is the world you're trying to conquer. So we wouldn't hide that from them and then spring it on them. We actually want a manager or agent who's like, yes, I've been waiting for you to be the person that I could do that with, right? What we want to do is we want the the managers and agents who read an email that says, I want to work in the UK and the Europe and to go, Ugh, not her for me. Good. We want to get rid of those ones because we don't want those managers and agents. We got to eliminate them everywhere, somewhere, right? Yes. So what we want to do is, oh, I love how your voice got really settled when you said yes just now. I want you, so what I really <laughs> want you to do is lean into your narrative being enough mm-hmm. and that we want to continue to own this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. You down? Awesome. Thank you. Yes. Yes, great. Uh, okay, um, I'm coming over here. To Amber and then Sierra. And I'm just checking our time, you guys. We're at like 149. Thank you so much for being attentive and for listening. I hope you're feeling inspired. Um, Amber, what is your question today? I see you nodding your head. It makes me so happy. Brian, your energy makes me happy. Oh, so good. thank you so much for this. You're sure. absolutely amazing. Um, my question is, how can I get more than five auditions a year when I... <laughs> work at Actors Connection at night and I own my own self-tape business and I've been in the game for a long time and casting even sends notes to my rep saying she's great and I can't get beyond this weird, strange thing that I've had happen the entire time I've been in New York. Yeah, wow. First of all, I'm sure that's very painful. So I want to just witness like you are doing all of the right things and it's not happening and I just want to you to feel my hand on your back and say that I'm here for saying you're doing all of the right things. So whatever we come up with in this little container that we have right here is some different ideas to add to the mix, not to say that anything you've been doing up to this moment is perfectly aligned. 
because I can tell by what you've said, you're really in front of casting directors and managers and agents all the time at Actors Connection. You've got your self tape business. I'm going to imagine your acting is incredible. All of those things. So let's put let's brainstorm where we're not going to say yes to anything for a second. Let me throw some ideas out. Do you ever hear anything about your essence or branding or type that feels like it could be in the way, not in the way, too specific, not specific enough? I just want to check that. I don't hear feedback regarding that. Okay. Um, but I mean, I do have kind of like a broad, like I can do white collar and blue collar and the drug addicts, strippers, hookers to the CEOs and the lawyers and secretaries. So there is kind of, I don't have, uh, I have certain headshots for certain things. Sure. I have a whole bunch of clips for these characters and all, I have a lot of media for like specific characters and such like that. Right. Then it sounds like, it actually sounds like that's not an issue. So let's not make it one. Let's just want to look there for a second. And then you have footage that you said that supports the different castability that you would lean into, correct? That's what you yeah. said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And are there certain casting directors that you know, and you guys, this is so fun for me. I'm sure it's not fun for Amber, but fun for me to do this with you. And I say that because at any point in your career, I'm sure you've been like, why am I not getting the auditions I should get? Right. And so we kind of have to go to different areas to look at this. I'm assuming you're an incredible client. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, the part that I wanted to go to is casting directors who've cast you in the past. This is true. You've been booked before. You've had jobs before. Yes. In theater, yeah. I've had a lot of success in theater. And so I've been trying to break into like the whole TV, you know, aspect of it. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm always early. I'm, I run my own business. So like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, question. Are your reps? I have reps. Are they the problem? Um, I don't think so. I mean, I have, I have reps in Atlanta. I have a reps in New York. I have, you know, a lot of, I have a lot of people looking out for me. Are your, do your reps have actors who are working yeah. like currently and on TV and in the places you want to be working, just making sure. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. I'm going to th throw an idea out that's a little wild. Is there a casting director because of your relationship with Actors Connection that you like know well enough that you could have a conversation with them? Oh yeah, actually. Yeah. But I've been holding back on that because you know, it's a weird thing to bring up, like. Yeah. So I think that, can we, can we, let's spitball a little bit of how to position it. Can we try that for a second? Could you pick a casting director that you also know, just oh, so y'all are not, in case you're not catching this y'all, how cool is it that Amber has someone she can talk to that way because she got a job at a good place where she can connect with people in that way. So I'm always a fan of that kind of world. So I just want to put that out there. Is there a casting director who you'd happen to know likes your representation? Yeah. Great, I would choose that casting director. Okay. Because then no one has to be made a bad guy. Like we're not gonna, that's not, the conversation is about my representation. The conversation is about, hey, as casting, as an expert, if maybe they allow you to pay them for a consultation or maybe they just have this conversation with you, I would just be like, I really wanna get down to brass tacks. I'm not looking for something to do, actually. I'm looking at, I wanna take a good look at what do we think is getting in the way? Is it just, I'm in a category that has got a lot of ladies in it and they have more and they have more credits or no, is it not just that? Because if it's not just that, then I might have something to do. Does that make sense to you, Amber? Absolutely. It might feel a little unsatisfying right now. I no, just, no, not, oh, this is, okay. yeah, like okay. amazing. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say, Amber, and this is something I want everyone to think about is, I need to see you act, I need to see you act, I need to see you act, I need to see you act to fall in love with you. So let's just pretend, Amber, that yes, your reps are doing a great job and they're submitting you, but no one's watching your actual tapes or not enough people are actually seeing you do your thing. And I'm assuming at Actors Connection, they're getting to see you do your acting thing. But just in case, maybe you could come up with a, here's a to-do item you can say yes or no to. You don't have to say yes or no to it now. No commitment needed, but make a list of three or four, that's it, casting offices that should be calling you in right now because of the shows that they are casting in this moment. Already did. Great. And good, I knew you would have. And I would try to ask them the question. I love that. And actually that's one of the casting directors that you that popped into my mind is the top that's on. So yeah, this is wonderful. And I would be, make a really, really, really safe space for them. And y'all, this is important because you need to say, I'm okay with you saying it's my acting. 
I want to make sure you hear that. And like, Amber, that's probably not it, but you want to make that much safety for them. Like, I'm okay. You talking about my acting. I'm okay with you talking about my body. I'm okay. with talking about my hair color. Like this is a conversation where I'm willing to put a lot of skin in the game here and to really hear honestly. And I'm not making you the God on a mountain that knows all the answers. Like I'm asking in your experience, what holds you back from me coming to your office more often? And they might say it's because CAA submit people all the time because like just whatever that is, right? We wanna just take it and we don't wanna say, here's the thing we're not gonna do. That's not the only answer, that's their answer. And so we might say, great, I'm gonna take a kernel of that and I'm gonna take some action based on that. Does that sound okay? Beautiful action. I would be down for you to ask us of like three different people since you have some relationships it sounds like you can lean into, I would do that. And then that way you can say, I'm having conversations with like three casting directors, you know, Celine Dion and Stevie Nicks and Madonna. Well, so I'm just trying to get a little bit of feedback from them so I can see what's going on. And I'm like, not anxious about it. I'm just trying to figure it out, right? So like let go of them feeling like I have to take care of needy actor disease because if they have to do that, they're not going to give you an honest answer, right? Right. So I cannot wait to see what you find out. I think it'll be surprising. Um, and it will give you some, I'm hoping it'll give you some peace. Okay. I love this so much. Thank you so much. For Brian. sure. I'm so glad you're doing it. You have to do it. Do it. Okay. Great. Um, Sierra, I'm coming over to you and then I'm coming over to Jess. Sierra, what's your question? Hi. Um, where are you? Hi. <laughs> um, first off, thank you, Amber, for your question and your vulnerability. And then Brian, your answer was amazing. I just want a little bit clarification on her answer, this three to four casting directors list, do they have to be uh, casting directors that she has a relationship with or could they be like target casting directors? It could be either. Um, it could be a target. She could be choosing target people that she like wants to be on their shows or it could be people that she knows. Here, it depends on her next action, right? If she's actually going to knock on their door and say, hey, I'd love to get some feedback from you. I think it needs to be someone she already knows okay. because otherwise there's cast actors are knocking on cast directors doors every single day. So if she wants to have that entryway, the reason why I want her to make the list though is even when she's meeting with, let's say she only had two she could reach out to, you only have one you could reach out to, you can still bring up those names of those other people to that casting director you're talking to because that person will know the work that they do as well. So the conversation becomes a little bit broader. Does that kind of help, Sierra? I, yeah, I think so. The difficult part here, I think, and most of it, some of you may raise your hand on this, is like, if you don't have relationships with a specific cast director, this is a little bit of a harder ask. I want to be very mindful of that. And I get that. And it also can't be, like, I'm not disparaging anyone when I say this. It just can't be the cast director who randomly has like a coaching business on the side and you can randomly hire them. It needs to be someone who's actually seeing actors every single week that you can check in with. Does that make sense to you, Sierra? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it may mean, and it may mean like about building a relationship before you can ask that question. It may mean, oh, Amber's journey is not the one I'm going to take because that's too many steps away from where I can ask the question. I'm going to start to do this part of my, I'm going to start making sure the cast director just know who I am right now. Then I'm right before I'm going to go to that phase. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I'm really excited for you, Amber. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, so my question is, I, I feel like there's a ton of classes and information on how to get an agent and get representation, but there's so little information, yes, so little information on how to, how do you then become a great client for your reps? And so maybe this is a seed I'm planting. You can teach this class. <laughs> how about <laughs> I, okay. Can I cover some of it right now? Sure. Okay, who else needs to know this? Anyone else here need to know that? I just want you to listen in. A great client is not weird. So what I mean by that is, you don't set yourself up to make stories about your manager and agent. You find out, like we talked earlier, um, when we were talking to Sapna, we talked about getting clear on asking questions so you're not allowed, you become vigilant around stories you make up about them. So you talk to them. Um, a great client, I believe, should be in touch with their manager or agent at least every two to three weeks in some way or another. Now that doesn't mean every one of those has to be like a, what are you doing today? How are you? I'm checking it. It could literally be an audition. That's good enough. But I'm just saying at least every two to three weeks, you are in contact with them. Three weeks is a little bit of a stretch for me. I like two better, but it depends on what you're really, you might feel like so held by your reps that you don't need it. I'm just kind of making that space there. They need to see you in real life fairly often. Now, right now we're in pandemic land, so that's a little bit tough. So it might be more like a Zoom call or something. Remember that they are thinking of you from the first meeting they had with you 
or the second time they saw you if they're not seeing you more often, unless, of course, you are submitting takes to them regularly, which is the next thing I think every actor should be doing. Your managers and agents, whether or not you have an audition, should see a tape from you once every two to three weeks. Here's something I'm working on on class, wanted you to see it. Because they need to love your acting and know how to submit you. And if they can't do that just based on that first meeting you had with them, and I think too, we think too much of our managers and agents at times, they are human beings. Okay, so that's part of it as well. Your communication is always clear. That's another thing that I think is really important that you have to take control over. And I bring a positive and generous assumption to, well, I bring it to every conversation I have, but I would bring it to a lot of the conversations I have to my manager and agents. Because I know I am likely to get a little cuckoo around stuff. So I'm going to not always trust my own intuition or I will question it and then get quiet and talk with it some more, right? But I will at first bring a positive and generous assumption about them before I start to say, they're not doing a good job. It doesn't mean you can't trust your intuition. I wanna be very clear, I very much believe in that. But what I mean is sometimes our intuition is also bringing our baggage from our parents. The reason why our relationship with the agents and managers is rough is because we all had parents. That's the problem. If we never had parents, this would be perfect, right? So. We have to just acknowledge that we're showing up as human beings. We brought some stories with us, okay? We want validation. We want so much from our managers and agents at times. And sometimes we're very easy breezy and we don't want it, but then we go through a pattern of wanting it. And that just comes, oh, I'm in a season of really needing validation from my manager. Okay, let's get real about this. So those are, those are some of the behaviors. And then I also believe um, if everyone, if you were to draw a, a, a triangle on a piece of paper and at the top of that triangle, you put your name and on the bottom left corner, you put agent. And on the bottom right corner, you put casting director. You have control of only two of the sides of that pyramid. You to your agent and you to casting. You cannot control the relationship between your agent and casting. So it is your job to take care of both sides of that pyramid and trust that the base is working. So I do believe it is about getting casting directors to get to know you. I also do not believe it is about getting 100 casting directors to know you. Uh, someone is screen sharing on accident. I'm not sure how you have permission to do that, but it's a real bold choice. <laughs> so Francie Mary, it's very weird that you have that. Oh, wow. It's just really happening. Um, there we go. Okay, great. We're back. Hi. Um, so that was weird. I was like, please don't show porn. That's all I can remind. Um, okay. So... Uh, Sarah, where I was going with that is, what was I saying? What did I just say? Uh, you, you were talking about the pyramid and yes. that it's yeah. really... Don't meet a million casting directors. Meet nine and get them to love you. Meet seven and get them to love you. Focus on a very tiny list. You don't need 15 jobs. I mean, Jenna Fisher taught us that she had one casting director who really loved her, kept calling her in and calling her in, and that's how she got her job in the office, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to let go of the idea that everyone needs to meet me or treating casting directors like roulette or like a lottery. Well, if I keep doing workshops, then I'll get the one who likes me. No, stop, pause, you're wasting money. Pick the few you're gonna focus on and do a bang up job at those workshops or those auditions. Do not go there to learn shit. Workshops are not classes. We have to call them classes because the law makes them call us classes. A casting director is there to cast people. If you learn something, that's just icing on the top. You gotta go there to be at the Olympics, to perform. So if you don't feel like you are in the pocket on that night, cancel the workshop. Take the hit of the 35 bucks because you're not gonna get your money's worth that night, I promise you. Which is why I always say to actors, you're either in that mode of loving up on workshops and you're really like doing scenes you love and you feel good about it. You can go to three or four a week or you're not and you take a break or I can usually get it up for like two a month. So I only sign up for two. So be a, the one place we overestimate ourselves is our ability to show up. And I want to be really clear on that. We have to do so much self-care to do that because you're, you're, you're on the line in those moments. So that's that, so that the way this all peels back to managers and agents, which is what your question was, is being sure that you can show up for them in a way that is building a relationship. So you're not just throwing money down the drain. So that's a start. Does that give you a start, Sierra? Yeah. And then I would just love, I mean, this question is for everyone. I have not done a casting director workshop since the pandemic. So where are people doing those workshops? And I'm going to just refer you straight to the chat and let people blow that up there. Yeah. Amber clearly is an actor's connection. She can probably tell you a lot about that. And yeah. if people also do one-on-one, -on -one, they do next level and they also do actor's launch pad. 
Um, I would just also say to you, like, it's not, I don't think it's that worth much worth doing a workshop that's in a different city than you're in right now. Sure. Like home fires first, then focus on other places. Cool. Great. Thank, Thank you, Sierra. You. Great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm coming over. Oh, I have the wrong window open. Ever since that screen share, things got weird on my screen. Okay. Uh, coming over to Jess and then Emma and then Laura. Uh, Jess, what is your question? Uh, my question is, I'm struggling right now through uh, sending out to agents and managers. I felt kind of like I'm falling behind. I know that uh, the only behind is a sexy behind, but I do feel like work is starting up again and like all of these things. And I'm, I feel like I'm getting disconnected with this path that I was on of getting an agent and manager right now. I'm looking, I'm trying to get these two scenes together, um, mm -hmm. toward, to, for myself tapes. And I'm kind of like struggling with that. I'm like kind of stuck. I just feel very stuck and overwhelmed because I, um, because I do feel so behind. Do you like that feeling? No, hard, you know, not yeah. at all. Yeah. And, uh, what would it feel like to commit again? Um, exciting. I, 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 I also feel, I also feel like there's so much because I feel so behind, there's so much there that it feels overwhelming to commit. The, the commitment feels overwhelming. So can we commit to one action by May 11th? Oh yeah. Today's May 4th. That's seven days from now. What's the yeah. one action between now and May 11th? Uh, I mean, I think I should be revisiting a lot of like the videos and like the things. Oh, how about you just put your damn self tape on? Oh, do uh, do uh, one self tape? Yeah. yeah. I Here's what I believe. Okay. I be and you guys, I don't know if anybody's ever done this before. We can become a little fascinated with the process that we're in. And it becomes a little bit more entertaining to us than the work. And Jess, you're a great actor. I've seen your acting before. Thank Put you. yourself on tape. Make the tape. Yeah. Be reunited with that energy anyway, because I think it will fall. You. It will get you reignited around this process anyway, because you'll be acting. So let's go to right. the acting exercise first. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that big sigh. And the other thing I would do is connect to one person that you can be accountable with. Okay. 100%. Find one person. Let's be accountable. You don't have to be working on the same thing at all. Right. But you could even say, let's text every single day at 9 a.m. I'm going to tell you one thing I'm going to get done. Okay. Something is, I want you to bring someone else into this journey with you so that you don't allow yourself to become, uh, with full transparency, just as inside of my program, Agent Goals. What I don't want you to become is babysat by the program. Yeah. Because it can make you feel like you're doing something just to watch it. Right. We need to be in action right now which is why I want another person besides my course to be with you. Got it? You want somebody else from your course. It could be. It doesn't have to be. It could be a friend of yours who also wants to be accountable to working out or whatever. But like, it might be helpful if it is. That's, I'll leave that to you. It doesn't yeah. have to. What I don't want it to become, because here's the thing, because you could become fascinated by it. If it's someone from the course, well, what are you doing? Well, tell me how you're working through that. What are you doing for your scene? Like, it could become a conversation that isn't helpful to accountability. Right. It might be easier if it's someone who's not doing the course, but that's where I would just don't get too weird about choosing the person. You could literally post on your own Facebook wall. Any friends want to be accountable to anything and check in every morning, like 16 people will write you back. The whole wide world is asking for this right now. Yeah. But it yeah. could be a corn dog. It could be a corn dog. That's what we call them. In oh, I, have, I, I immediately thought of somebody that I, right. uh, that's yeah. the person. Don't second guess yeah. that the universe okay. provided you the perfect person. Yeah. And put your thing on tape by next week. Don't do anything else. Like, you can think about other stuff, but your job is between now and next week to put the thing on tape. Okay. That's it. Okay. That way, all of your creative energy, when you're washing your hair in the shower and you're walking your dog or you're going to the grocery store, like you are thinking about the energy around this tape, not all the other things you need to do. It's just that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That sounds great. Great. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. Got you. This. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Um, Laura, I'm coming to you and then Charlotte and then Migs. Hey, hi. hi. I'm hiding self view. Um, this is awesome. You're awesome. Your energy is, is amazing. Um, I want to thank my good friend Amber for forwarding me all your stuff. So my question is actually about um, aging goals, if that's okay. 
It is here. No one else here is indoctrinated. So it might be a little weird. So can you give them a little bit of context so that they can understand? And can you act as though we didn't just have this conversation in case I decide to use it in the podcast? Okay. Great. Okay. So um, my good friend, Amber sent me, uh, she forwarded me a, um, uh, the, the video for uh, the, this program called hashtag agent goals. And it was a, a, about an hour, I would say it was, you know, very, uh, it was awesome. You star in it and you, just talk about everything I think and feel and nodding my head. And I watched it twice. And so, um, and you talk about, you know, there's, there's an investment, which of course you put a lot of work into it. My question is um, once, you know, when, when I sign up and, you know, do the, do the program, um, is there an ongoing like coaching thing with you? Is that part of it or, Great. I'll answer this question. And now what everyone else who might not be interested in the answer to this should just stick with me for right now. Cause I want to give Lauren an answer because she deserves yeah. an answer because she has a great question. Um, so there's four months of calls that come with the program. So that's four yeah. months, two calls a month. So there's a, and then after that, there's two months inside of my membership program where there's four more calls. So we're together for six months. I see you every other week. And is that the, price include the membership or that's addition? It includes those first two months of the trial membership. If you decide to continue, okay. it's $67 a month. So if you want to okay. go more than six months with me, that's when it changes. But that includes the six months. The price of agent goals includes six months of calls. And if I go more than six months, then that's? 67. That's the 67. And then yeah. that's like I'm locked in? For month to month. Yeah. Month. Yeah, no, but I, well, I want to be. If I want to be locked oh, in, it's $67, yes. right? Yes, yes. And, and there's more, and there's also, and just, just to not make you confused, I don't want to get you confused. There's more okay. bells and whistles that come with that program, but I don't think, okay. I don't want to confuse this moment of the agent goals decision for you. Okay. Cause I need more of Brian in my life. Oh, Laura. <laughs> I, thank want, you. I want that. <laughs> I love it. I would be glad to be there for you. Thank you yes. for this question. If you have any excited. others, please Very email excited. me. Okay. I email you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brian at All Brian right. Pataka. I'll see it. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Love that. Thank you so much. You guys, I swear I didn't pay Laura to ask that question. She totally just raised her hand and did it. Okay, um, Charlotte, I'm coming to you and then Migs. Charlotte, what's your question? Uh, uh, hi, uh, uh, hi, Brian, uh, thanks for doing this. I'm, I'm up in Boston and we're a strange city in that um, your traditional agent thing, there's a couple of ones for models, but it's actually not a thing. You can go directly to the like three or four casting places and I have relationships with all of them. I've known them for like 20 years. They know me. They've called me in when I'm right for a role. I'm very specific. You know, I'm barely five foot. I've got the accent. You know, I have a certain look, yes, no. but I do get called in. I've got cast by them. I'm on their radar constantly. I don't get called in that often. My thing is, um, I, I don't have the desire to have an agent because in this market, and you said, cultivate your own market in my market where I am right now I feel that it's not necessary and I want to feel like am I wrong like I I have worked and made my living as an actor and the only time I haven't is during this pandemic it doesn't, it doesn't sound, sound like you're like wrong, wrong Charlotte. Charlotte. <laughs> here's what I'll say I like that you're asking the question what the only I can't trust myself to know the Boston market well enough but what you sound like you've been there for a while you know what's happening you get called in it all feels great I would challenge you to speak to two or three actors who are represented to see if they have the same experience you do that are kind of in the same position you are have been around for a minute are they getting more opportunities is there something that they like about having an agent the one thing that I also just want to add Charlotte in terms of having an agent is it's nice to feel protected and you're not having to be the one to advocate for yourself. Now, you might not have had any situations where like, I didn't really need protection. There was a contract. It was equity. Why would I care? Like super easy, right? I find that that's nice to have somebody else who's the interplay between you and wanting to negotiate for more money or negotiate for more accommodations or for a higher per diem. That part of having representation is nice to rely on. It may not in your market be worth giving the 10% or the 15% if it's a manager or whatever it is to them. So I would just... I would vary without any anxiety around this because you're working as much as you can anyway. It sounds good. Like be a little bit in an inquiry around this. And I'd be curious. I'd say, you know what? I'm going to be curious about this between now and the 4th of July. I'm just going to be open to receiving information about what it's like to have an agent in Boston. And on 4th of July, I'm going to make my decision if I'm going to care anymore. And then I'm going to. Yeah, I've, I've actually done that. And the people that I know who have agents are more model types. Got it. Got it. Uh, and, uh, and I've, 
approached a couple of them and was like, okay, they they weren't that interested and another one only dealt with non-union and I'm both unions. So I use my union a lot for my protection. Got it. And oh, great. That's I, the, the one place that I go to for this, and you can tell me uh, to pound salt, is when a big film comes to Boston, do you get seen? Uh, if I'm right for a role, because I'm very specific. I got called in for Don't Look Up. Um, and that's another one of my sort of semi questions is I was relieved I didn't get called because they filmed Don't Look Up in December when the numbers were really high everywhere and before vaccinations. Yeah. So I'm kind of glad I didn't land the role, but it was a big five page audition awesome. just at the beginning of self tapes. I awesome. don't think I did a great self tape, but okay. I know that when more stuff is in, I did Chappaquiddick, I was the mother. So I've had right. some pretty good things. Yeah, Charlotte, you're getting the right opportunities. I wouldn't let this, I wouldn't let, and what I want to be careful of even in a room like this is that we don't get contagious of other people's goals. And it sounds like you've got a real clear head around how things work in Boston. So it doesn't sound like representation is necessary. Um, it does sound like you need to remain present in the community, kind of the way you're describing. It's like, I need to be able to make it to auditions and see them so that they know that I'm here. Like that would just continue to do whatever you're doing to keep that lifeline open because your auditions are coming to you. It sounds like in the right, you're not saying, I'm not getting enough auditions. That's not how you started this conversation at all. So I would let go of an idea that you have to have reps there at all. Okay, yeah. thanks. Great. And Congratulations on all that great, good action you're getting. I love that. Just one tiny little thing. Yeah. Advice of like moving back into being in person on the set if you have been having a what I call a very strict quarantine. I love it. We've had those too at my house. So here's what I'll tell you. Uh, I was with one of my dearest friends last night. She's on the show Good Trouble. Um, and she is a recurring on Good Trouble. And she has to get tested every third day to be able to go to set. It's very strict protocols. They are using the exact same, pro right now, even though people are vaccinated, they are using the same protocols they were using like two months ago, which is the same number of people are allowed to be on set together, hair and makeup's in zone B or whatever, like all that stuff is still happening. So your union has you protected. And I would lean into believing into that and just know First time is going to feel weird. First time is going to feel weird. Last night when we were with her, we went to pick up dessert somewhere and we went into the place to pick up dessert. And she was like, oh my God, this is wild. Like she'd never done, right? So like, we are going to have to have our new experiences around this and a different new weird anxiety will show up with people on set and in meetings. When you meet people, some of your meeting is outside and not in person or whatever it is, right? the not in person part doesn't make sense in this conversation. So pretend I didn't say that, but so we're just having to lean into just a real, I think a sense of um, humanity around ourselves that it's going to be there, right? We're going to have that anxiety show up in its own special way. And just to be really kind when that comes up, just kind in our heads that the, the, the this is, everyone's going through this. And also one thing that I will, who, uh, if you haven't had the chance to be on set yet during the pandemic, I want to share this with you. It doesn't feel the same way and people feel like they are there to do a job. And part of that is because we have masks on, we're talking less, we have zones we have to stick to. So the normal like, oh my God, it's so fun to be here and talking to the person, there's just a lot less of that right now as we're still in the pandemic. So I just wanna be really clear, if that energy is something that you thrive on on set or you know what makes you comfortable, just walk yourself, visualize, okay, the set's gonna be a little different than I'm used to. And it's, and no one doesn't, everyone still likes me. It is not a story of them not liking me. It is a story of that's where we are right now. So just humanizing that things are going to feel different so you can show up as the actor you're meant to be. Cool. Charlotte, I really appreciate that question. Oh, thank you and so I wanna, much. I want to assure you and I want to assure everyone here. I can't promise you it's all going to be healthy, right? I can't, pro I can't promise you your health. I can't promise you you're all going to be healthy. No one's ever going to get COVID again. But what I can promise you is people on sets are trying to do a really good job for this. And I think the union sets are obviously going to be way better for this. So just protect yourself and be mindful. Um, and my wish for you is that you can have a really joyous time when you get back to set, if you haven't already. Okay. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, you. Migs, coming over to you. Hi. Hey. Hey, nice to see you. Good to see you too. What's your question? Um, Okay, so I'm reticent to ask this question because uh, this is my first time asking this out loud. <laughs> um, my question is about, uh, I guess, leveling up. Um, I'm like grateful that things have been going like well for me for like a uh, for a while now. You know, like I'm like a working actor and whatever, but like recently, 
uh, when I started out, it was all like, I was grateful for whatever word came my way. And like, I, my name is Migs. I'm like, I speak Spanish. So it was very much like, you know, you're going to be like the drug dealer or like the cop or like the high maintenance, like gay boyfriend. Those were like the three things that I always got called in for. And I was grateful for them and uh, whatever. But now I've built up like this body of work and I just want to like, kind of like, yeah, go up to the next level. And this is something that is new for me, you know, like I just, um, so I don't know if this is even something that's in my hands. I like, this is all weird. I feel weird asking. It, but, yeah, so uh, what I hear you saying is I'm afraid to ask the universe for something more than what I've had so far, because I don't want to ruin what I've had, or I'm not allowed to ask this, or I need permission to ask this. Yeah. Your gratitude does not get buried because you say that you want more. Your gratitude does not disappear because you say that you want more. The, tr- the miles you put on your odometer, I think that's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. The miles you put on your odometer doing the roles that you've done so far have given you great gifts and knowledge and skill to be able to tackle things at a higher, in a different, at a higher level, whatever that means to you. Right. right. Yeah. And so I'm going to encourage you to take up a lot of space in owning this for yourself. Okay. What I get from you, Migs, is a great humility around like, if your agent called and was like, hey, they want you to do this co-star, would you do it? You might have to say no. You might have to say yes. Is that yeah. kind of what you're kind of thinking about that kind of world? Or like, I want to give you for this small, like what, give me a, give it, let's get real down to breast tack. We'll yeah, I mean, I've done, I've done all the co-stars. I've like, I'm, I've worked my way up to like doing like guest stars and like recurring roles. Right. And so what do you want to say no to? Uh, yeah, like the my, my manager just kind of is a kind of guy that just does like a shotgun kind of thing. You know, it's like anything that comes your way, you know? So I've had some things where it's like co-star where you have like one line and a thing and I feel bad, like saying no to anything or whatever, or like saying like, Hey, I'd like to go for like bigger things, you know? Um, How does he respond? He's usually like, yeah, sure. No problem. You know? Um, so it's a little test. The universe is giving you a bunch of tests. You sure yeah. you want that? You sure you want that? You sure yeah. you want that? Cool. Yeah. Anybody else ever get tested like that? It's really fun, right? So, Migs, take up space. I want you to imagine you're like, this is my 500 pound Greek wedding. I don't know what that means, but like, I just want you to like, just like imagine yourself as this person who is taking up a lot of space. And if a co-star comes and you're like, you know what? I would love to do that freaking show. Sure, I'll do it. Yeah. So there's yeah. Some needs around the decision. As opposed to, well, if I say yes to that, it has all of this meaning about me being big or small. Right. Does that make it's like, so I would love for you to have freedom inside of claiming the space you're taking up. Yeah. And um, wait, by the way, you're not going to miss out on anything by saying no. Okay. Cool. Did you Thanks. say that? I will yeah. share with you one of my clients, one of my first clients who booked a series regular. She it felt really good to say that, by the way. Um, she, um, she had been called in by the same casting office over and over again for a co-star. And then she was like, they fucking hate me. Like, they don't like me. Da, da, da. And they said, and she was not, because they, she wasn't booking any of them. Yeah. And they said, we were waiting for the role to be good enough for you. Because we didn't want to waste you on that. And so you are the casting director in that scenario. I don't want to waste myself. Yeah. Um, so I would just encourage you to have a little bit of awareness of that office hasn't seen me in a long time. Maybe I'll go in on that one. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty good about that. Yeah, for sure. Right. I think um, it's um, thinking about like my language going forward, like in your class, like reaching out to people and that sort of thing. It's like a thing that I'm kind of like vaguely kind of like, and if reaching out to casting directors and things, I don't want to be like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't so know how, thing, right. Yeah. So here's the thing that I think makes us making a really clear distinction. I want everyone to listen up. It's much more difficult to say to a manager that you've never met before. I only want to be seen for recurring roles and guest stars. And it's much more weird to say that to a casting director that you're just emailing, Hey, checking in with you, by the way, I want to be seen to man- right over. You yeah. will not need to say that as much Migs. the more that you start to occupy this space. Okay. Great. Because it will be clear from your resume, from your material, from your behavior. Okay. So I do think it's a little weird to say in the beginning, because it's almost like saying, meet me, but don't, I don't want that kind of, well, yeah, I don't want to do that either, but you know, yeah, yeah. So we have to just own a little bit more of the, like, I'm the way that you are showing up is going to tell them. Okay. Like you are 
Anne Hathaway in Double Wears Prada when she finally starts wearing the clothes. Right. And then Meryl finally notices her. Yeah. Okay. Right. So you just got to start wearing the clothes and they're going to start treating you differently. Cool. Let's not make the business into Amanda Priestley, (laughs) but you get what I'm saying. I totally do. Yeah. Okay. So Migs, here's the thing about this. This is not the kind of thing that is going to feel settled right now. I would want you to create something in your life where you take up this space. So let me give you a few ideas. You don't have to say yes to any of them. Okay. My, you might create like an altar in your house. That might sound really real weird and woo-woo to you, but you know, I have crystals right here that I love to hold when I'm talking to you guys. And by the way, I'm not like, I know nothing about crystals. To me, the point of the, an altar is there's a place in my home. Remember altars have been around for thousands of years, so they have to work or they wouldn't be here anymore. There's a place in my home that I dedicate to this thought or belief. So when I walk by that altar, it gets some of my energy. So there's an altar in your home that is dedicated to the bigness of your career. You might find different words for this and you might put things that have meaning for you. Here's a photo of me in that play that I did. And here's this. And like, by you taking the conscious action to dedicate yourself to that, by building the altar alone, it starts to make it have this manifest energy going around it. And so that's why taking up the space can feel like, okay, great. I'm going to take up space. The next time I get that weird audition, like it doesn't feel real yet. So we have to make it real by giving action to it. And the altar doesn't have to be, there's nothing formal about this. You can decide right, you right. want to go crazy, but like it literally could be like this table, the, this part of my dresser. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. it does need to feel a little bit sacred. So that all of the objects that are there mean something to me. There is a reason why this is here. Like when I had a, so I'll just share with everyone here. We sent out our anti-racist like commitments to the world. And we knew we were going to get hate emails on the day we did that. Cause we do. And so great. We get to get rid of those people. Thank goodness. But on that day, my assistant and I lit a Palo Santo and we said a prayer and we knew that the people who got it would be the right people to get it right. Like that was our, that was our message, right? And that we would have the fortitude to handle any annoying emails that came back. They weren't really hate, but like bye kind of emails, right? Yeah, yeah. So that to me is we, we have to build, to me, the lighting, the Palo Santo, like what the heck does that, that to me, it was like, great. I'm just adding some sacredness to the mindset I want to bring to this. All right. Yeah. I would love you to do that. Will you create an altar? Do you like the altar idea? Yeah, I like it. Uh, yeah, all of this is just, it, I guess my question isn't practical so much as like in here, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's that's a helpful kind of thing to, um, to hear. Yeah. Put action to it, put action to it, put action to it. Great. Thank you, Migs. I love that question. Thank you so much. Sure. You guys, I'm just checking in because it's 227 and I don't want to keep you beyond the time that I said I would keep you. So I'm going to get to a few more people. I see a few more hands up. I'm just going to try to get to them. Um, and try to not over talk my answer. Also, a few people, uh, Summer and I got emails when we set up this class. Some people have questions about agent goals like Laura asked. If you do have those kind of questions, I'll stay on with you after 2.30 just to answer those so that we can spend our time doing coaching stuff right now. So Shishi Dance, I'm coming to you. And then my Chamberlain. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you Good. so much for this session. My question is, pandemic has been great for auditions and self-take has been really weird, but it has been great. My question is, how do I utilize those self tapes to benefit me more? Right. Because I have tons and I get great feedback and all that. So here's a few rules to use them, okay? Remember that if you're gonna share a self tape with someone who doesn't know the script, I need to be able to understand what's happening in that scene right away. So some of those self tapes might not work because if I'm watching the whole time trying to figure out what's happening, then I'm not watching your acting. So that's going to eliminate some of those right away. The other is, are the self-tapes high quality enough to feel like I'm using this as an emblem of my work? We just want to check that at times. Just make sure it really feels like it really shows you the right way. And then the other piece of it is, does it, I, it doesn't always have to have this, but sometimes it's good if the self-tape has a beginning, middle, and end so that the person watching it can watch you fight for something within the scene. So I believe self-tapes that can be used as pitch clips, which is kind of what you're doing here is you're using a tape over and over again. We need to have the, the actor in that scene needs to usually, not always, but be the one who wants something, not the one who's reacting. If you're the one who's reacting, it just takes a little bit longer for us to get who you are. That's not to say always, but if you're using them this way, I would just, those are the ways to use them. And then how to use them, you could add them up to your actor's access profile. Just ask your reps if they're okay with that. Plenty of people use their tapes there. Sometimes then I would give a description when I post it up on actor's access, like what the scene is about to help the, re- the wa- whoever's going to watch it understand. Um, and then also, if you have a self-tape that you love that like it's okay to share and it's like 90 seconds, 
you can send that in an email. If it's okay to share it, say, hey, I was really proud of the self-tape. I wanted to share with you. It's a character that I get to play all the time, but I was laughing and rolling afterwards and thought you might enjoy it. Here's 90 seconds to make you smile. What you don't do is try to disguise it as like, here's a tape of me acting. And like, you don't really give any background to like, like you want to be like, where this was an audition and I really love, like you want to give like your personal enthusiasm around the tape. So I understand why the heck is she sending this to me? Right? Just kind of giving me a narrative to go with it. Okay, cool, thanks. Great, love that. Congratulations on having a busy pandemic. I love that, cool. Um, Maya, I'm coming over to you and then it's gonna be Jay Nicole and then Dally. You should be able to mute yourself. There you go. Oh, I didn't push the button. That was my fault. That was on me. All right. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh my God. It's been wonderful listening to you. I love your intuition and humanity. Um, so I'm basically starting off. I do acting. I'm trying to get into film. I do voiceover and modeling. Um, and I want to know, is it important that I get a website? If I make a website so early. No, 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 no. You don't need a website to be an actor. You need to know how to act. Okay. I'm gonna beat this short. So, don't go to Maya, devote your time to training, fabulous headshots, not model headshots. I have commercial headshots, okay, especially great. girls. Okay, great. So, training, getting credits, fabulous headshots. That's the world you need to live in. And take right now, it's the kind of land where I would say take any job you can within COVID safety protocols and blah, 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 blah. Get experience on set, get experience on stage, get all the experience. And that's your time. A website is like a down the road moment for you. So I totally believe that actors can benefit from having a website, but until your actor's access profile is fire, why are you bothering? Like, and I don't mean a ton of credits. I mean that it is gorgeous, that it is clear, that you're spending money on footage, that you're getting those real tapes, that your website doesn't matter until you've done that. Because remember the number one place to get auditions in the world is actors access and then like backstage and then like LA casting or casting networks. Those are the, right? And I'm not gonna go to your website also unless I have to. So I just want to lean into that being a, it feels like a vanity task for me sometimes for actors, because it does feel good to have one. And I totally get that. And if you've got time to burn, great. But I want the, the, the priority to be that your profiles look amazing and that you're active and you're getting out there, right? So get those things clear and then go there. Does that help you? Yeah, thank you so much for your honesty. Be free, be released from this, please. Okay, great. Um, Jay Nicole, hi. Hi, Reverend Brian. Is that what that says? Reverend it is. It is. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, I also want to just thank you for having this, number one, and number two, for standing in solidarity, even with haters um, for the racism, anti-racism. So thank you so much for that. Um, question is a follow-up to what Amber asked about earlier. I would love to know how I would position that conversation. So going back to Amber's question about and your response to Amber's question about having conversations with CDs, target CDs and or CDs that, um, that you have a great relationship with, how would I position this when trying to set up the conversation? Like, should I ask this question via email or should I email them to set up a, a phone or Zoom call? And if the latter, what would the language look like in that email to set up the meeting? Great, such a good and articulate question. I'm gonna do the best I can. First things first, if you have a relationship with this person where you would normally text, then you should text. Like I'm assuming you have a closeness with this casting director. So you should relate to them in the way you normally would. Maybe Amber's gonna see him walk into one on our actor's connection one night. She's gonna be like, oh, hey, like in the days when we are together, again, right? So um, the way I would ask the question is the problem is the solution. Hey, Celine Dion, uh, it's been a minute. I wanted to reach out to you. And I wonder if you'd be open to having a very honest conversation about a question that's been on my mind in my career. And it's kind of weird because I know I'm doing all the right things right now. It's not that. It's a little bit more specific to how things look when you're sitting at your desk. Would you be open to hopping on the phone with me or a Zoom call where we could just talk about this a little bit? I promise I'm not going to be putting you on the spot. It's actually just trying to understand a little bit more about what happens in the casting process when I'm being, when I'm being considered. 10, 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes tops. And I would just write that out. Now, again, I'm assuming you know them. So this may be even more formal than the way you would say it, but that's kind of the language I would say. I want to have a very honest conversation with you. Cool. Got it. Cool. Great. Yay. Thanks. Yay. Love it. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Sarah Murphy Katz. Hi. What is your question? Hi. 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 So 
I need help formulating my question. Great. Um, I'll just give a, a, a quick background as I can to get to the actual question. Right. Um, I started my life loving performing, being a performer, uh, you know, only moved from kindergarten to first grade because in first grade I got to do the play. Okay. So that, <laughs> that just gives you the, the sort of basics. Um, but then at a certain point in my life, I sort of let the fear of it get in the way. And so I took like an adjacent route mm -hmm. and I am a creative executive. Um, I work in TV and uh, I am a network current executive. And sorry, I'm sweating and shaking. You're doing, and you're doing so great right now. We really appreciate your vulnerability. Okay. Thank you. And I've missed it my whole life. I have missed it. Um, I've managed to keep singing and doing some things. Um, I've been singing with a vocal coach my whole 10 years in LA, but like, I kind of just do it for me. And um I joined an acapella group last year. I've like been trying to get back into it in the actual performing, like for people, not just for myself. Yes. And I joined an acting class January of 2020. And then the pandemic happened yeah. three months later. So anyway, all that to say, I think I get in my own way. I know I get in my own way. And therefore I sort of keep myself from really starting. Um, and if you have any thoughts or advice or, um, you know, just encouragement, I guess, for those of us who took another route and are trying to figure out how to get back to it. Yeah. I love this question. And all of us, I think really appreciate you asking Sarah. So I really just want to thank you. And even starting with your kindergarten to first grade journey just brings us all back to why we love acting in the first place. And so it's so beautiful to hear you say that. Um, Applause for your courage and bravery of saying it out loud and for going to voice vocal class and kind of doing it for yourself and joining acapella and joining the acting class. And like, I'm sure each of those decisions came with its own wrestling that you did in the dark around, should I do this? Should I do this? What, what's the point of this? Why am I doing all those thoughts? Right. There's a, there's a limiting belief. I think that's sneaking around in here and it might be around. I'm not allowed to do this while I have this job. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have to quit this job to be able to be an actor. Mm. Yes, I think that's in there. And I also think I'm one of those people that like I get really devoted and myopic with my job. And I find it hard to then take my focus off of the shows I'm working on and the being sort of like in that creative their role to focusing my creative energy back on myself also, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, I believe in a, a positive, generous universe that always provides for what we need. Uh, that is, I'm saying that from a privileged white cisgendered male position. I want to be very clear on that. So I, that does not believe I don't believe in privilege. It does. That's my bigger spiritual belief. That being said, could you begin to entertain the idea that if I chose acting, I would still be provided for. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like for you to live with that a little bit. What's a practice we could create around you being with that thought? Mm. I don't know. I have an idea. Okay. Tell me. Okay. If anybody's wrestling with anything, you can all do the same idea. This is what it is. I think I want you to take a piece of paper. Not right now, but I'll tell you what it is. I want you to take a piece of paper. Current, also, applause for you staying present in this conversation and really going there right now. I like how I say applause and don't applaud. I think that's, <laughs> okay. So um, take a piece of paper and write at the top of this piece of paper. The story I tell myself about saying yes to acting is. Hmm. And I want you to write. Stream of consciousness. This is a three phase process, just so that you know. So you're gonna to wanna to set aside like 20, 30 minutes for this, okay? There's no phones allowed during this process. No computer, no phones. This is the story I tell myself about saying yes to acting. Right, 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 let it all go. Then you're gonna ask yourself some questions. This is phase two. What are, my, what are the thoughts that come up 
because of that story? What are the beliefs that come up because of that story? What are the feelings that come up because of that story? Because those may feel a little esoteric and almost abstract in addition to, I wanna be clear of that. And where do I feel the story in my body? And don't skip that one. It's the hardest and it's the one everyone wants to skip and don't get weird and be like, my chest, no. The top of my chest above the left ventricle of my heart, like really be with it and find it, okay? This could work for anything you guys are stuck on. Last question, what are the facts of this story? Hmm. That's a tougher one. I think for in this particular question, it's a little bit tougher, but the facts are um, acting doesn't always pay money right away. Great, that's kind of a fact, cool. The facts are my rent is this amount of money. The facts are I'm one to have a kid. I'm making shit up right now, right? So whatever it is, okay? Just like kind of facts. Mm -hmm. Walk away from the paper, walk away from the paper. Between each of these phases, like after the first phase, when you write the story, walk away from the paper, come back, ask the questions, walk away from the paper, get a glass of water, do not get on your phone, look out the window, whatever. Third phase, what's the story that I want to tell about saying yes to acting? And then be really good to yourself with a lot of self-care. And don't tell anyone about this because it's still moving. The mitochondria in your body are still rearranging to say yes to this new idea, okay? And oftentimes something shows up in the next 24, 48 hours that is gonna challenge or go with your new idea. So just really allowing yourself to go there with this. I'm gonna just share with you something I'm not supposed to do as a coach, I'm gonna tell you anyway. So in my own life, I worked at an advertising agency in New York City, my clients were Broadway shows, I loved my job, and then one day I had to walk into my boss and say, I don't wanna be you when I grow up. We need to make an exit plan. And then I was acting. And I acted while I was at the business at the same time. And I slowly, slowly, slowly left. Because I had to take unpaid acting jobs at the beginning, because that's what acting was in New York City at the very beginning of my career, and I was in equity, and da 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 da, and I was able to do both, and my life days were long, and whatever it was, and slowly it became ready for me to say yes. So what I don't want you to—it's kind of like when we talked uh, about moving earlier with Rita. We can't expect it to suddenly be like, oh, and now acting is the answer, and everything is exactly as it should be. Right? We're gonna have to feel into this. Mm -hmm. through this journey, I would just give yourself a, a long leash and a lot of self-care. Mm -hmm. But can you start with this exercise? Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank um, you. It's 2.45, you guys, and I've kept you so much longer than I said I was going to. So I wanted to be, thank you, Sarah, for what you said today. So I want to be fair to you all. And if you have questions for agent goals, I'll stick around to the end to just after this for a minute. But I want to thank everyone for being here today. It, just so you know, in case you can't tell, this is like my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world. So thank you for giving me the gift of being to fulfill on my purpose today. Um, had therapy this morning and I was like, I'm feeling cranky about this, this, and this, and this, but I have this great thing to look forward to today. So that was you. Not possible without you in the room, even if it's an electronic room. Um, so we'll let you know when the podcast episode comes out, we'll probably butcher this thing together. I've never done this before. So we're building the plane as we fly it. So I appreciate you being willing to show up and share your hearts. Stay connected with me. Um, and if you're not already in the Actors Belong Here Facebook group or uh, the Brian's Breakfast Club Facebook group, they're both on Facebook. I'll see you there. I love Instagram. I'm there more often. Love is a strong word. Um, and uh, thank you so, so much. If you do have those agent goals questions, I'm going to run to the bathroom and come right back and I'll just answer any questions about that program for you. Um, let everyone take a break for a second. Okay. Have a beautiful week. Take good care of yourselves. Love you so much. Yeah.